You know, there are some talk show hosts and news anchor that claim to give you the straight story. They're going to tell you the truth. They have a no spin zone. When in fact, if you could see if the camera were to pan out, they'd probably be a blur from the waist down because they're dancing so hard. Believe me, they are spinning as hard as they can. And anybody who steps outside of their particular uh, view of the world is relentlessly attacked. It's, it's really easy to see because when they're doing interviews, um, they'll bring on one person to represent one view and another person to represent another view and maybe even a third person. And it's almost like a Jerry Springer school of, uh, of interviewing because they'll set one off, they'll set the other off. Next thing you know, you've got three people all screaming at the same time and the interviewer does nothing to stop it. And that's, in their view, fair and balanced reporting. It's nothing but propaganda. And, you know, when you start looking for alternative sources of information, of course, people go to public broadcasting or NPR or stuff like that, and they totally forget, uh, you know, the introduction of these, these television programs, these TV networks or these radio broadcasts usually start with an announcement by the underwriter. The following program is brought to you by a grant from Union Carbide. Wait a second. Is this reporter going to tell you any information that might be derogatory towards Union Carbide or any of the other main corporations that are funding them? Of course not. So how can we even expect to get the truth from your national public radio or public broadcasting systems when in fact the money that pays their bills and pays the salaries is coming from the very corporations that need to be exposed? The climate in the United States right now is one of tremendous unrest. There is a constant debate, uh, whether it be controlled or created or not, between the right and the left, and the, the, the uh, Republicans and the Democrats and the conservatives and the liberals, and people are butting heads constantly and losing faith in their system. They're seeing the corruption in government. They're seeing corruption everywhere they go. And, and it seems like the standards are getting lower and lower and lower, and people are getting more disgusted with the United States government. Well, is this serving a greater purpose? Is this preparing some people to accept and even have a desire to allow the United Nations to come in and lead the way? There are a lot of folks on the left or on the liberal side that are embracing the United Nations without ever having investigated how the United Nations came into being where they came from, who funded them. And this is a tremendous danger because I think that if people were to examine the, the concept of the United Nations, how it was put together, who wrote the charter, they begin to understand that the very people that they are protesting against are the people that put the United Nations in place. So if we allow our constitution and our government to go by the wayside and say, oh, that, well, it didn't work, and the great uh, republic that the United States used to be fell flat on its face and it's, it's destroyed itself, we're going to have to go to the United Nations. We are voluntarily jumping, jumping out of the frying pan and into the fire. A few years ago, a USA Today poll asked the question, whom do you trust? 6% said that they trust the federal government and 24% said that they trust the mainstream media. I ask you, where do we get our information from? From official government spokespersons and from the mainstream talking heads. So if 94% of the Americans don't trust their federal government and 76% don't trust their mainstream media, how are we going to be able to make informed decisions? How can we determine the destiny of our country? We now know that we can write all the letters that we want to our representatives and our senators and they go unread. You can email them and you'll get a computer-generated a computer generated response. You can make your phone calls and your cries fall on deaf ears. We now know that there is a very serious question into the integrity of our voting system. And we also know that the legal system has been corrupted as well. So common sense dictates that if you can't vote them out, you can't sue them, you can't have them arrested, what else do we have other than massive demonstrations and, God forbid, an outright revolution. The only uh, possible way out of this mess, obviously, is to inform the American people on a massive scale, which means we would have to somehow find a way to get this message out in the mainstream media. Uh, there has been discussion in the past about massive 
nationwide demonstrations uh, all coordinated to occur at the same time at every television station, every network affiliate, coast to coast, and force them to open up the television cameras like they used to in the old days when, when an, a president was assassinated or when they were walking on the moon. Have them open up all of the nationwide television cameras and bring to the table some of the issues that have been ignored and cover up, uh, covered up for all these years. Issues like the Federal Reserve, the IRS, uh, where the true origins of the United Nations, uh, what happened in Oklahoma City or Waco or TWA Flight 800 or, or, or uh, 9-11. All of these issues, what happened to our POWs? What's going on with the Gulf War illness? What's going on with experimentation uh, of our troops now? All of this information has to be given to the American people. They've got to get this information in order to make informed decisions. And my personal opinion is the only way that that's going to happen is if America will rise up, rediscover what their true heritage is, re understand what it is to be the, the land of the free and the home of the brave. Because we won't be free unless we have the courage to stand up and have our voices counted and not be intimidated because we might have our license plate taken down or we might, we might be seen as some sort of fringe or kook or we, might, or we might have our name put on a list. I'll tell you right now that if your name isn't on a list, you're not doing enough for your country. The founding fathers pledged their lives and their fortunes and their sacred honor. I don't think it, it's, it's too far of a leap to understand that your elected officials are certainly not going to pledge their lives. They're not going to pledge a penny of their fortune. And by these two, they, they demonstrate that they have no sacred honor. How many of your elected officials have sons or daughters that are serving in the Iraq war? I think you start to understand what's going on here. We, the people, are their cannon fodder. They have sent our sons and daughters to fight their wars so that they can have their spoils. This is what it's all about. It's imperialism and it's fascism. And some folks hear that and say, oh, you must be anti-patriotic or anti-government. I am not anti-government. This government is supposed to be of, by, and for the people. This government is supposed to be following the, the guidelines or the rule book, which is called the United States Constitution. And it was Abraham Lincoln that says, we seek not to overthrow the Constitution, but to overthrow those that would pervert it. And I think that's where we are right now. The only way we're going to be able to overcome this is to somehow inform all of America on a massive scale, which means to take back the media.